So I um, started, many of you recognize this face and this name, um, Jason Fung. I'm going to be talking a little bit about fasting today. Um, <clears throat> I have, over the past two months, I started an intermittent fast, um, basically skip breakfast. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of this out there. Um, fast five, basically where you're saying you're eating all your calories, all your meals within a five hour period of the day. Now, the idea behind that is that you do get into uh, some fat burning every day. Um, there's some assumption that you stop, uh, you burn up most of your glycogen uh, within 12 to 16 hours. Now, <clears throat> um, like most fasting, the first the first time or two, it's difficult, but then uh, you adapt. Your body adapts to fasting very, very quickly. Um, it's interesting. I had heard of this uh, gentleman. He's a um, he's a nephrologist in um, gosh, it's not Toronto. It's one of it's the uh, the town on the east coast of uh, Canada, and I'm blanking on it right now. Uh, maybe somebody can help me on the comments. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so I got interested, I, I had seen this uh, a couple of years ago, and a couple of years ago I was on a six-in-one uh, water fast uh, pattern, meaning uh, uh, one day a week I would just do water. Um, there's a very popular type of fasting called five-and-two, and on those two days of the week uh, people typically will eat up to 500 calories or so. The 500 calories are not necessary, but you, um, they ma it makes it a lot easier to get into that kind of diet and a, a lot easier to hang on to it long term. Um, <clears throat> why am I in, why have I been into uh, to one type of fasting or another for a long time um, and didn't know I was in a fad? Uh, I come from a, a family with uh, bad culture around food. I, I remember uh, my wife and I visiting my family, gosh, 20 years ago, maybe 30, uh, for Christmas holidays. And uh, literally every counter in the house, every table in the house was laden with cakes, fudges, desserts, snacks that had been... Uh, prepared by the women of the family um, as a way of a language of showing uh, love to the family. And obviously uh, having snacks, I mean, uh, that's just, uh, that's kryptonite. Uh, my dad at one point in his life was over 350 pounds and he was my height. I have stayed between 160 and one, as low as 145 uh, during most of my adult life. Um, I did get uh, up to 180, uh, 185, 190 uh, a couple of times during college. Um, so as you can see, <clears throat> I have that same um, challenge. I've had to, I travel a lot and I've had to set strict rules for myself in terms of eating out. I would, my, one of my major rules has been I would never eat, uh, I do occasionally, but the major rule has been I do not eat a standard um, entree uh, for dinner while traveling. I eat a salad and sometimes a piece of meat on it or a, quite often a piece of salmon, most often. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, what do I, uh, what is this uh, video about? Is it just about fasting? No. Um, I did want to make a few comments about fasting because I'm getting uh, more into... I finally got his book, one of his books, and started reading it. Um, I started reading pieces of this book, and actually I got it a couple of months ago and never got around to it. Got around to it uh, a couple of days ago and couldn't put it down. Very, very interesting book. Now... <clears throat> One of the things that you'll hear time and time again is, well, on my day, days one and two of a fast, this is for extended fasting, and 
And not a lot of people have done these. Um, the, the furthest I've gone is a 60 hour fast. Um, skip uh, eating Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and then uh, uh, eat uh, Wednesday at about noon. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the folks that have done three days and more quite often will say, oh, that third day was so easy. Uh, the first two days were kind of hard. The third day was easy. I felt better. My uh, brain was working better. And so I'm not curious about that. You, you see that pattern. You hear about it. What's going on? So, evidently, something is. Now, <clears throat> in, this, uh, in the, the book, Complete uh, Guide to Fasting, Fung mentions this article uh, that I'm getting ready to talk about, and um, he says it's because ghrelin goes away. Ghrelin doesn't exactly go away. It go does continue to decline over the three-day period, and I'll, we'll, we'll look at that in just a few minutes. Um, uh, cortisol slowly increases as... Uh, actually, cortisol and... Um, Ghrelin have a very interesting inverse relationship, as you see in the title of this article. Um, <clears throat> but is that it? I'm not so sure. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that and a couple of other things, but first a brief uh, introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E um, I started off out as an ER doc. Um, those docs that have worked in the ER become frustrated very quickly with the vast amount, almost all, uh, of the death, disease, and disability that uh, patients bring in with them sh could have been delayed or prevented altogether. So I went to uh, Hopkins, got training in prevention, um, and have worked with docs and patients on understanding prevention as opposed to uh, waiting till something happened and tried to fix it, trying to fix it. Um, and that's what this channel's for, making that available to a lot more people. Um, now, here's the abstract from that article that we just uh, discussed. And as you can see in this, they took 33 young adults. They, um, the adults volunteered to do anywhere from a 12 to 84-hour fast. They uh, took blood uh, every three hours and looked at serum ghrelin levels and uh, cortisol levels. Now what, and they also looked at growth hormone levels. What they expected to see was uh, ghrelin stimulating growth hormone uh, release during fasting. According to them, they didn't think it was uh, related, but they did get a good surprise regarding uh, ghrelin and um, cortisol. Now I've mentioned ghrelin several times. Um, as, as you see, here's how you spell it down at the bottom of the page, G-H-R-E-L-I-N. And ghrelin is the hunger hormone. There's only one hunger hormone that we've discovered or that, that we know about so far, and it's called ghrelin. It's um, uh, made by uh, cells in the lining of the stomach. Um, now, <clears throat> Here is the top of this, the peak of this first day is cut off, but just barely. Um, it didn't peak much higher than where you're missing. And again, I'm, I apologize for those of you who may be frustrated with this part of the video, the visuals, but as people who've watched other videos of mine know, know I've struggled mightily. I'm working hard. I've uh, made a lot of progress in terms of visuals. But let's get back to this uh, this uh, graph out of the article, um, <clears throat> or out of the study. The, um, this is ghrelin. Uh, this is cortisol levels, uh, insulin levels, and growth hormone levels. And these are the time periods for fasting. So they started at 12 hours. And as you see, um, 12 hours, ghrelin was low. Then it picked up at uh, right after that, hour 16 or so. Uh, cortisol began to decline, insulin declined, and um, 
growth hormone remained stable and to low. Uh, it growth hormone did have somewhat of a diurnal uh, pattern. Diurnal means two different uh, areas, low and high, during the day. And you do see here, insulin did not during the um, the uh, three day fast. The, uh, the others appeared to, especially cortisol and ghrelin. And in fact, if you look at your typical cortisol um, um, and ghrelin um, uh, diurnal pattern, uh, cortisol tends to peak in the morning and uh, decline during the day. Ghrelin, on the other hand, uh, tends to do the opposite. Um, and if you look at this pattern, again, this is what they were showing, that um, cortisol and ghrelin appear to have uh, exact opposite or inverse uh, relationships. And that pattern goes both through on a daily basis. When um, ghrelin is high, cortisol is low, and uh, vice versa. When, cort when ghrelin is low, cortisol is high. Uh, the other thing that you tend to see is the overall upward trend as the uh, volunteer got into the third day. Each day of fasting, the cortisol tended to increase just a little bit on average, and ghrelin tend to, tended to decrease just a little bit on average. So I think that's what um, Fung was referring to, that continued decline of ghrelin or the hunger hormone over that three-day period. What is maybe the most critical of all for those of us who are focused on cardiovascular health is that continued daily decline of insulin. And uh, here's another thing, uh, the stable low levels or lowering levels of insulin. Um, these numbers are fairly high for, or started out fairly high for insulin for these folks. I'd need to go back and look and see uh, oh, this, these were these were obese. Uh, some of these patients were obese, and uh, some of them were normal weight. Anyhow, <clears throat> for many of us in the cardiovascular area, the goal is to drop that insulin level and keep it low. And if there's one thing that fasting's really good at doing, it's that. Um, got fairly technical. Got into which we often do. Uh, got into some. Uh, interesting cardiovascular issues and uh, talked about some fasting. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about uh, fasting and some of the information that's out there and um, maybe couple, co cover a couple of uh, Dr. Fung's books. Thank you for your interest.